Welcome back to History in Motion, proudly brought to you by Midas. Before the break, I asked you a quick question. Who was the only female to score points in Formula One World Championship of the 20th century? The answer is Lella Lombardi, who, while racing for March in the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix, finished in sixth place, and despite the race being stopped early and half points being awarded, she scored a half a point and finished 21st in the Drivers' Championship. Next up on the track are the SKF Pre-66 legends of the nine-hour production cars and the champion of champions. A little bit too fast in qualifying, it was a naughty boy, so they put me right at the back, but that should make it just more exciting. I think you two today is going to be really exciting, 10 or 11 cars on the grid, so it's going to be quite fun to come from the back. It's going to be very close, so we've got around 10 cars or so in the U2 class, um, so it's going to be, be very, very nice uh, fun racing. I'm sure they will be fun racing, and as the cars are lined up, ready to head out on the track, I'm sure the drivers will be looking forward to racing again. Mark Detoy will lead the field out with his brother hot on his heels in the Chevnova. Thomas Faulkner and Henny Hunnevold fill up row two. Patrick Gearing is the first of the Class U2 entries, and he will have to work hard to keep that position. First to get racing are the champion of champions and the Class ZA and ZB cars. Roy Prondo and his Alfa Romeo GT Sprinters chasing after the Alfa of Clive Densham and the big muscle cars as they round turn one and head towards Renexcon. Mark Detoy enters the hairpin in the lead, closely followed by Jonathan Detoy and Henny Hoenevold. Clive Densham and his little Alfa hanging onto the bumper of Hoenevold. The Class U2 drivers take the start and side by side they stream into turn one. Stuart Grieg and John Simpson jostle for the lead as they drop into turn one. The Mini takes the lead and the BMW of Trevor Tuck moves up beside Simpson as they head to the hairpin. Tuck has the inside line and should snatch the position away from Simpson. Further back battles are developing as Patrick Gearing tries to work his way up the field after having to start at the back. Through the final turn comes Mark Detoy with a Chev Nova and Mercury Comet hot on his heels. Hrunewald getting a little out of shape as he comes onto the start finish straight, but that doesn't seem to slow him down. Side by side with Jonathan Detoy, Hrunewald comes into turn one. There is nothing between the two. Into Renix Khan and Jonathan Tutoy pulls alongside his brother, but can't make it work for him round the outside. The little mini of Stuart Greek leads the U2 battle. Behind him, Simpson, Davies and Alasio. Gearing leads Trevor Tuck, who is pushing hard on the BMW. Into turn one, the pair drop. Three abreast, Davies, Simpson and Alasio dive into the hairpin. Great close racing. Alasio runs wide into the gravel and he loses ground in the battle. After having a last-minute change of cars, Faulkner is now in the Studebaker instead of his Mustang, and he started towards the back of the grid and will be looking to make up some positions. He is now catching the BMW of Trevor Tuck and the Alpha of Mark Miller. Up at the top of the track, Jonathan Detoy has another look down the inside of Mark, and Henny Hunnevolt is glued to his bumper. Through Kenwood they go, and it looks like Jonathan has managed to move ahead of Mark as they head towards turn seven. Hunnevolt follows him through. Into Renning's car and Faulkner's alongside Alasio. Simpson pulls out and dives down the inside of Faulkner through the hairpin. Side by side, the Studebaker and Alpha go, pushing as hard as they dare. Jonathan Dutoy and Henny Hrunewald wheel to wheel racing through the final turn. The Mercury Comet getting it a bit sideways on the main straight again. Up into Sassel and Larry Davies is challenging Stuart Greig for the lead in Class U2. Side by side, the mighty many and the Alpha race into turn six. Greig on the inside, Davies out wide with what is arguably the better line. Keeps the power on and moves ahead. Faulkner watching the battle in front of him unfold and he waits for any errors that he can take advantage of. Side by side, the Chev Nova and the Mercury Comet head into the hairpin. Jonathan Dutoy inside, Henny Hrunewald on the outside. The inside line plays to the advantage of Dutoy. Coming through turn four, and Gino Alasio is all sorts of sideways in his Alpha. Running wide onto the outside of the track and into the gravel, he then comes flying across the track and spins off on the inside. He gets his Alpha going again and will have a lot of work to do to get back up in touch with the group. John Simpson and Carl Pinar are having a great battle as they power through Sasso and onto Kenwood. Simpson in his yellow Alpha leading the Lotus Cortina. Into the pits comes the Mercury Comet of Henny Hrunewald, who has some fuel starvation issues. A real shame as he was having a great race at the front of the field. 
Still racing hard are these gentlemen, with Greek, Faulkner and Miller all jostling for position as they come through Renexcon. Patrick Gearing not wanting to be left behind challenges Faulkner. The checkered flag is out and it's Jonathan Dutoy who takes the honours. Mark Dutoy is one and a half seconds behind him. The battle for second place in Class U2 is going right down to the wire and Grieg leads Miller and Gearing into the final turn. Miller hanging onto the bumper of the Mini as they head onto the main straight but he's not able to get ahead and it is Grieg who crosses the line just over one tenth of a second ahead of Miller. Clive Densham came home in third place behind the Dutoys. Larry Davies had a comfortable victory in Class U2 by almost five seconds. Great battles throughout, with Carl Pinoff finishing just over two tenths of a second behind John Simpson. We had uh, quite a lot of fun there with Mark and Jonathan Dutoy. Uh, you know, we, I think we were a bit short of numbers, yeah, but it didn't spoil the race at all because there's three of us really having a good go. At a stage, Jonathan and I got away a bit from Mark, and uh, Mark got into a tussle, I think, with the Alpha. And we looked again, Mark was right there. Um, at that stage, I started developing a bit of fuel pressure problems, and uh, unfortunately, the car cut out. But uh, I think one of the best races I've had with Jonathan side by side for a few laps together, so it was good enjoyment. This was probably, for me, um, the closest and hairiest uh, race we've had. Um, I think I started fifth on the second lap. I was probably 10th, and then, um, uh, we were just swapping positions left, right and centre. Um, it was great fun. Um, I'm happy to have uh, finished in third after at uh, Chaos, uh, but it was, it was really good, good clean racing. A great race for me. I started at the back today because I um, actually broke out in qualifying, so I had to start at the back. Uh, thank you. I had a good start. Uh, there was a bit of a bundle in the beginning. I managed to make up a lot of places. And then I had a bit of a chase with my friend in the Mini. It took me about three or four laps to get his measure, or five. And then the V8 came and messed our fun up a bit. But towards the end, the V8 couldn't make the corners and the tyres were going off and I managed to get him up the hill. So, first place, I'm thrilled. I've been waiting six years for a race like this, so it's finally paid off. So, yeah, the start was great for me. Um, I held everybody back and put my foot down and I left them for breakfast, which is quite nice. But then I waited a bit, which is a bit stupid, but anyway, they caught me eventually. But yeah, I had a good race with Mark and Gina, so it was great. I really enjoyed it. Good day out. The crowd were treated to some great action in race one, and I'm sure there'll be more of the same in store for them in race two. The first half of the grid roar down the start-finish straight and barrel into turn one. Jonathan Dutoy leads the pack, and as in race one, Henny Hunnevolt and Mark Dutoy are right behind him. Going into Renning's con and Hunnevolt moves to the outside and tries to find a way past the Chevnova. Side by side they race. Thomas Falconer and the Studebaker is towards the back of this pack. Roy Prondo sneaks up the inside as they move towards turn three. Hunnevolt and Dutoy are side by side heading into the final turn. Dutoy on the outside runs slightly wide onto the gravel on the exit. There's no doubt that these guys are pushing hard. Larry Davies, after his victory in Class U2 in Race 1, leads the pack through the final turn. Stuart Gree currently in second, with Mark Miller in third. Into the hip, and there is nothing between Dutoy and Hunnevolt. Hunnevolt on the outside has the longer way round, but he keeps the power down. Roy Prando, still battling with Faulkner, finally finds a way past and moves ahead of Faulkner on the way to Turn 3. In Class U2, Larry Davies is coming under pressure from the Mini of Greek and the Alpha of Miller. Deja vu up at the tabletop as Dutoy and Hunnevolt run side by side. Mark Dutoy inches behind the pair. Hunnevolt and Jonathan Dutoy are on the limit and you can see Dutoy climbing the inside curb as they race through Kenwood. There is nothing between the two as the battle continues down the hill to GNH Transport. Fantastic action! Hunnevolt takes advantage of the inside line and edges slightly ahead of the Chevnova. The battle continues down towards Turn 1. In Class U2, Stuart Grieg has the inside line and moves ahead of Gino Alasio, who runs wide and almost makes contact with John Simpson as he gets himself back onto the track. This unsettles him and he runs off again, letting Ben van der Vestes and passed through Kenwood. Henny Hunnevolt heading into the pits again. This leaves Jonathan and Mark Dutoy to battle it out for the lead. The Chef Camaro with Mark at the wheel slides down the inside through Sassel and edges slightly ahead of Jonathan. Side by side they race to turn six. The Camaro in the lead and Clive Densham in his Alpha has a look down the inside of the Nova, perhaps a little ambitious. 
the Lotus Cortina of Ben van der Vestes and leads the BMW of Trevor Tuck and the Alpha of Roger Houston through Turn 5. Murray to Murray, the BMW and Alpha race towards Turn 6, nothing between them. Houston manages to get ahead of the BMW on the inside line. Larry Davies leads the U2 race behind him, the competition is fierce. Stuart Greig is just ahead of Patrick Gearing, the Mini really impressive today. Side by side, Fonda Vestazen and Houston climb up to the tabletop and enter turn five. Fonda Vestazen leads them through the corner and secures the position. Larry Davies and his yellow alpha leads the fierce battle for second place in U2 between Stuart Grieg and Patrick Gearing. The pair have been locked in battle for most of the race and nothing has changed as Grieg inches ahead of Gearing heading into turn six. Positions reversed from race one as Mark Dutoy in the Chef Camaro leads Jonathan Dutoy in the Chev Nova over the line to take victory in race two. Close, exciting racing from the SKF Pre-66 legends. Stuart Grieg and Patrick Gearing taking their battle down to the line. Grieg is ahead and Gearing isn't able to make a move and he has to settle for third in class after some fantastic racing. Ben van der Vestazen has Roger Houston right on his bumper as he comes round to take the flag. He runs slightly wide but is able to hang on to his position. Mark Dutoy taking victory over Jonathan Dutoy. Stuart Grieg crossed the line just over two tenths of a second ahead of Patrick Gearing. And Ben van der Vestazen pipped Roger Houston by just over two tenths of a second. Trevor Tuck three tenths behind Houston. I had a good start and then the first couple of laps I had Henny try to drive me next to me. I think we did probably two laps next to each other. And I think uh, he got a bit of fuel starvation. I could see he held back a little bit and he pulled off. And I thought, oh, I'll just carry on going now and I'll fill the gap on my brother. But then he just started coming and I thought, okay, well, let's see. He passes me, I'm sure I'll stick with him. He passed me and he just carried on going. So I couldn't stick with him. I thought he was a bit too quick for me today. Good result for me, first uh, for the day. And it's going to be very close for first overall. Had a difficult race. I mean, the Camaro is a great car, but it's got a very heavy steering. So uh, it takes a lot out of you, but uh, got to grips with it in the end and just uh, put in some good laps at the end there. We had a real stonking battle there. Stuart wouldn't give me an inch. I think he was more off the line than on the line, which is how I was unable to pass him, but really good fun. Great to see a mini back in U2, and the way it hops around is just spectacular. I was getting scared a few times because uh, he was knocking on the door, um, but unfortunately I was just able to watch my mirrors because Larry had disappeared. Um, so all I did was watch him, I remember, wherever he went, I went. It was a bit naughty, but uh, I'm sure I would have given them a gap if he'd gone for it. <laughs> it was very interesting. Uh, these guys with the alphas all over me around the corners, and I really battled to keep them behind. Yeah, we had a great time. First race, I managed to get past Ben. Second race, oh, he was just too quick with me. A wily old dog, he knows his way around here. Tried everything, tried everywhere, but uh, ran out of talent. I think what helped me a little bit is the fact that Trevor Tuck was behind him with the BM and kept him busy so he didn't, couldn't concentrate too hard on me. I had a bit of a misfire all day in the BMW so I, it, it was difficult to drive it but it was such fun watching these two clowns try and get those cars around the track and then they both got me. But it's fabulous, you two, again fabulous racing, fabulous group of guys, really on the right track. We'll be back with action from the Marlboro Crane Hire Historic Saloons Classes 8E after the break.